So the day has finally come for us to go down the most deranged, demented, and dangerous rabbit hole of all. Even though I go by JK Ultra, I've avoided talking about this topic because MK Ultra is the highest level of mind control designed to destroy the mind. The language is so heavily coded that even reading about it can convince you that it happened to you. So that's why I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. I already lost my mind on this so you don't have to. Okay, so oftentimes when we hear about MKUltra, we hear references to celebrity mind control. But let's go back to the facts. This is not some made-up conspiracy theory. This is a confirmed program, and in 1977, victims went in front of Congress to testify. And in 1995, Bill Clinton issued a official apology on behalf of these victims. So according to official documents, this program lasted from 1953 to 1974. Although many believe the program may have covertly continued after that date. For this part, let's stick to the official. We're gonna get down those rabbit holes, trust me. So the origin of this program actually predates the CIA itself. I, Wild Bill Donovan, OSS officer, and Project Bluebird, which eventually became Project Artichoke, which then became MKUltra. So MKUltra was a bit of an umbrella term, 162 sub-programs. Now, officially, we know that there was two main objectives. One, to find a truth serum, and two, to create assassins who they themselves would not even know they were assassins and would have no recollection of the experience. Now, it's speculated that the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy Sr. in 1968 might have been one of these cases, where Sirhan Sirhan the assassin still to this day claims he must have been under hypnosis because he has no recollection of the event. He's still not fully convinced that he did it. Which eerily mirrors the 1959 novel Manchurian Candidate, which is a political thriller about a man who is brainwashed to become a political assassin. Now let's talk about one of the other confirmed objectives of MKUltra. Find a truth serum. Sidney Gottlieb was a biochemist, and he was unlike many of the other people in intelligence at that time. Nowadays, CIA is very diverse. I mean, how else do you infiltrate different groups? But back then, it was more elitist and heavy on the nepotism. And Sidney was unlike them. He came from a poor family, but he soon became one of the most notorious bad guys of the CIA. In the 1960s, Eisenhower asked the CIA to assassinate Fidel Castro. It's rumored that Marilyn Monroe knew a little bit about this in her diary that was uncovered in the 80s. What we know for sure is that Sidney Gottlieb made several attempts at this. First, wanted to take advantage of Fidel's love for scuba diving. So he sent him a wetsuit infected with fungus that would aggressively eat away at his skin. But Castro never put on the wetsuit. Gottlieb made several other attempts, including poisoning a box of cigars that he sent him, and also making some L pills, which were lethal pills that were meant to be put in his drink, all of which were unsuccessful. Now, in this unrelated interview from 1975, just to paint a picture of how demented this man is, at the end of World War II, he went to Bergen-Belsen concentration camp to select victims that would likely respond well to treatment. And I know some of you are going to say I'm lying, so go look at the interview on YouTube. Which appears to be connected to Operation Paperclip. It was also a secret program at that time, where 1,600 German scientists were relocated to the U.S., including Werner von Braun, and contributed to the establishment of NASA. He also says something very briefly in this interview that while he was in this concentration camp, there was negotiations of people immigrating to the U.S. or to Palestine. Okay, so let's get back to MKUltra. Albert Hoffman, a Swiss chemist, created LSD. When the CIA found out about this, they said, give it all here. They purchased everything, 100 million doses. Now, later in declassified documents, since then, people have discovered that actually there was a discrepancy between kilograms and milligrams due to the U.S. not being on the metric system. And it's believed that it was actually way less doses than that. But they spent about a quarter of a million dollars to get every single dose of LSD in the world. 
and that's when they began to use it on unwitting victims. The most famous case of this was Frank Olsen, who's also a scientist working for the US government and was covertly dosed by Sidney Gottlieb, which is what the Wormwood Netflix documentary is about. And this gives us this pop culture trope about if you take LSD, don't jump out of a window. But it actually gets much worse than that. But the CIA enlisted 80 different facilities to carry out this LSD testing such as mental facilities, one of the most famous being Allen Memorial Institute in Canada, where the wife of a Canadian prime minister checked herself in for depression and was given so much LSD against her will to go into insanity, or where they conducted specific experiments on black men. They dosed them three times a day for 77 days without their knowledge or consent also conducted these experiments in prisons. Whitey Bulger, who after these experiments became an infamous mob boss, was given LSD without his knowledge every day for a year straight. In the 1970s, when this information became public, he tried to hunt down Sidney Gottlieb and kill him. The book Chaos, Tom O'Neill spent 20 years investigating to discover that Charles Manson was actually an MK Ultra test subject prior to the crimes that he committed. And so was the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski, who at 16 years old attended Harvard because he was a math genius. But he participated in a psychological experiment with Henry Murray. There were 44 other universities conducting experiments including Columbia, Ohio State, and Georgetown. Okay, so we're gonna have to do a part two because Timothy Leary says that these acid tests what led to the CIA sponsoring the consciousness movement and the counterculture hippie movements of the 1960s. Terrence McKenna says that the CIA started the age of Aquarius and admits to being recruited by the CIA. Talk about how the Grateful Dead is involved, Allen Ginsberg, William S. Burroughs, and how this is all connected to the summer of love. If you want to hear more, check out my interview with Jessica Reed Krause, House and Habit on Substack. We literally rented a UFO in the desert to a whole uncensored podcast about MKUltra.